Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Flight crew refuses to let soldier on plane. Told don't let him on. Dash glad he didn't. 45 minutes later. There have been far too many news stories lately about poor treatment from airlines and the horrific ways that passengers have been treated. We have all seen the news stories of people being dragged off of airplanes for one reason or another. Recently, one soldier was trying to get home before he had to leave for a nine-month tour in Kuwait when he experienced several travel issues which lead to a layover in Dallas. When he got to Dallas, which was his final layover, the flight staff would not let him board the plane after someone was screaming, don't let him on. He was so confused about why they would not let him on the plane to get to his final destination. Then he received a phone call that changed his life forever. According to Love What Matters, I went to my normal doctor appointment Thursday morning thinking I would be scheduled for an induction for a week out. Brooks and I have been practicing my call to the Red Cross because we heard it was really hard to get men home for births and we were told the only way it would actually work is if I was in distress, so we were pretty upset about that because I was not having any issues with pregnancy other than a little high blood pressure. To continue, at my appointment my blood pressure was very high, and they did blood work and sent me home. About an hour later, after telling Brooks there was no hope in him getting home, I received a call from my doctor that my pressures were too high and the baby was being stressed and I was preeclamptic. She told me to be at the hospital as an hour and they would go ahead and induce. I called Brooks frantic and he was so excited. I then went on to call Red Cross and let them know it was indeed an emergency and they simply just needed clarification from my doctor. I get to the hospital at 3 p.m. Thursday and they confirm my state and tell Brooks to book a flight from El Paso, Fort Bliss mobilization to deploy to Kuwait for a nine-month tour to Dallas layover then to Jackson but that he could not book a flight until after 10 a.m. the following day. I was sure that we would already have a baby by then. But at least he gets to come home for four days so I was taking whatever I could get. Friday morning my water was broken at 7 a.m. and Pitison began. Brooks got to the airport in El Paso and boarded his plane at 10 a.m., mountain slash daylight time, 11 a.m. central time. He called me as soon as that flight landed in Dallas at 2.38 central time and I was 5 centimeters dilated. He was scheduled to take off at 3.55 but luckily his flight was delayed to 5.45. Without that delay Brooks would have been in the air and unable to face time. I quickly made my decision on who would be in the room during labor and it was my stepmother, Deanne and my mother-in-law, Teresa. The doctor came in to check me at 5 o'clock and she said it was go time. My mother-in-law secretly FaceTimed Brooks and shoved the phone in the front of her shirt. When I began to push, the doctor asked what she was doing, and she showed my doctor Brooks's face on the screen and she realized what was going on. Millie was delivered by a different doctor who was not aware of the situation, my doctor told her to pull the phone out and show him what was going on. Brooks was telling me it was okay, and I was doing so good and I heard him wincing and saying wow. Through my pushes. I could hear people in the airport talking and cheering. Brooks then went on to say that they were making him bored and needed to get off as soon as she finally started to crown and all I remember was my doctor screaming don't let him board the flight. She's here. She's here. So, the airport personnel let him sit there and watch till it was over. Once it was over he turned off his phone, got on his plane and landed in Jackson Airport at 7 p.m. and Millie was born at 5.23 p.m., 7 pounds 6 ounces 21 inches long two weeks early. When Brooks got to the hospital I asked all 17 people to leave the room. When he walked in at 7.20 it was just Millie and me. He picked her up and held her for 5 minutes and kept saying wow I can't believe we just had a baby but the entire time I was already dreading him leaving 4 days later. He told me about the people on his flight cheering and watching and I told him it would be crazy if Ellen called. The next morning, we woke up to someone telling us to check Facebook where we had over 1000 shares and 20,000 likes. We thought that was it but no way it's still going strong. I have the sweetest messages and I also have other military wives and mothers messaging me about how I got in touch with Red Cross and got him home and any tips. We had random people bringing gifts to our rooms and nurses coming in and thanking Brooks for his service. It has been an amazing, emotional time full of so much support. What an amazing story. It is great that the flight crew was aware of the situation and they didn't want him to miss one second of it. It is definitely an experience that they will never forget. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.